had a lot to do with a learning styles, but and being taught the proper learning style, being taught in the proper way. But even had more to do with how the person viewed life, that the way they thought about life, the operating system of the brain. If your operating system is such that um, that you view life through a really negative lens, that you're really highly critical of yourself, that you beat yourself up every time you make a mistake, that you think that by focusing intensely and analyzing every problem you have, you're going to get success, then you're probably going to create a very slow growth for yourself. Actually, I can guarantee you will. You're going to slow your growth down dramatically. So I always say that the first thing you want to do, what really makes inner game work, which then makes outer game work really well, is not necessarily working your inner game around women first. It's working your inner game around um, how you view the world. Now, in, in a book called uh, Before Happiness, they talk about something called positive inception. Positive inception is, a, uh, excuse me, not positive inception, positive reality. And positive reality is basically the idea that, um, we'll shut the door here, got an, an ambulance going by, or a fire engine. But positive reality is basically the idea that some people view the world through a really positive lens. They think the world is really supportive. It's here to help you. It's here to to change you. It's here to, uh, to, to help you get to the next level based on whatever you want to do. And other people view it through the lens that of learned helplessness, which is the, the world is really out to get you. And uh, there's extremes of both cases and, and you know, there's just different versions of all this stuff, but those are the two basic ways that I see it. Um, learned helplessness is basically the idea well, I'll, I'll give you an original study, and then I'll come back, and then I'll kind of tie it all together. Um, there was a study done by a scientist who, uh, who took a puppy, put it in a cage, then did a mild electric shock on the bottom of the cage, but didn't put a lid on it. So the dog would jump out and every time it got shocked. So then he put the lid on the cage and then shocked the dog again, and the dog couldn't get out. And the dog eventually started crying, whined, and just laid down in it and gave up and got used to the shock, basically. Then they took the lid off again and shocked it again, and this time it didn't jump out. It just laid down in the shock, even though it could jump out. And a lot of people that I see come to do work have some degree of this going on in their life. They want to change. They're working hard to change, but their internal thoughts, their operating system of the brain is attacking them and saying, but it's going to be hard. I have to work really hard. Or... It's going to be a huge struggle, or what's the point? I'm not going to change anyways, even though the other part of them is saying, no, I'm going to do it. And that's what makes them grow and change so slow, is that struggle. Now, people with a positive reality don't have any sign of this learned helplessness. In this book uh, called Before Happiness, they were doing a study on people with positive reality. And, and it's the only place I've seen reference to positive reality. I was calling it a lot of different things before that. I was saying you got to develop certainty, you got to develop belief, you got to develop um, um, trust, uh, knowingness, that you know that this is going to work and you work on developing this inside you. Then I saw this, that positive psychology was already studying it. And in that, they started to study people who viewed the world through this really powerful positive lens. And there are people like that out there. And, they be, and they're beginning to realize that that's the determiner of success in people, not IQ, not social quotient, not emotional quotient, which are what they thought were the term, determiners of success, how high your IQ is going to be. Uh, what they actually noticed is you could have a really high IQ and still be on skid row. But people with lower IQs but a high positive reality, they see the world as supportive, are going to, going to typically succeed. They're, they are going to succeed. And, uh, and so the, real, the best way to work your inner game is to change the way you view learning in the world so that you can accept new ideas quickly and easily. You can see the world as supportive. And, and in my belief, the world is. I, I literally do this by going out and contemplating it. I, I get good at meditation first, the ability to feel my body and, uh, and really feel and, and relate and relax into my body and then really feel the world in relation to my body, not my head. And uh, I do basic meditation exercises. I do a lot of something called uh, release. From there, you can do any type of meditation. It allows you to go down and feel the heart, the stomach, and, and drop into the body. Contemplation. And contemplation is the act of looking at something 
from a not from your thoughts. Not, I'm not analyzing what something is. I ask questions and then I drew in a sense don't look for the answers. I meditate on the answers. I drop the answers into my body. It's like Einstein said he used to use a lot of visualization and he'd wait and he'd wait for the answers to come to him. He'd just sit and visualize. He didn't analyze his, uh, the things he realized into being. He kind of drew them out of himself. Great authors talk about the, the story just came to them and they wrote it down. Um, the flow state is another version of this. It's just kind of happening to you. And that's what you want to develop inside you. So when I look at something in the world, at something like positive reality, I look around and I say, I say to myself, um, how can I see a positive reality in the world? And I don't analyze the answer. I just kind of let it drop into my body and I wait for me to see proof of this. I say, well, how can I see a positive reality in that person over there who's struggling and that successful person over there? How can I see positive reality in people that I see on YouTube that are successful or in TV that's successful or in movies? How can I see positive reality in that guy that's homeless in the corner? How can I see that life is basically supportive? And I've been able to see this in everything. And as I do, I start to take all the stress off my body as I realize it more and more in my body as I contemplate and meditate on this. Sometimes 20 minutes, 30 minutes I'll ask. I'll go over a series of questions and just meditate on the questions. And, re and then suddenly answers come to me. They pop up in my mind. Or I see them, the answers in, in, uh, somewhere around me. I see something happening and I just have this realization. Oh, that, that makes sense now. And in that, I begin to realize that uh, how everything is here to help me get what I want. My, my thoughts are creating my reality all the time. And as I see that more and more, I stop beating myself up and I just start focusing on success. Um, and that one is huge, is the ability to contemplate and meditate is huge on where you want to go. Um, and, uh, and I'll give you a quick example of positive reality in the world. It's, um, it's uh, if you look out there, picture yourself as royalty 300 years ago. You have a better life, the average person, 90% of people have a better uh, life today than royalty did 300 years ago. If the king of England was rolling around in his carriage, and now imagine you in, on your, in your car with air conditioning on a hot day, with some people have seat warmers, seat heaters, your favorite music playing, you just got food, you can stop and use a real bathroom, you don't have to roll, pull your carriage over on the side of the road. I mean, all in all, life gets better every year. Or at least the opportunities around you get better every year. And more and more shows up to be supportive. Whether you choose to take advantage of it, whether you believe you can or not, it's the big key between the successful people and the unsuccessful people. Um, and so contemplation, meditation are huge for working your inner game.